Hey folks, it's Mark at Titus. Uh, we just rolled this engine into the dyno room. Uh, this is a 377 inch. Uh, it, this is a truly a cleavor. This is uh, a Fontana block, which the block is half Cleveland, half Windsor. But we've pretty much got the engine fully assembled. Uh, we just got a few more odds and ends left to do before we can fire it up. But I figure I'd just bring it in the dyno room and, and go ahead and hook up some of that stuff. Um, what I've done because of the, the tight clearance between the tunnel ram and, and the distributor, this is actually a point style Mallory distributor that I've converted over to a new style cap and removed all the points. So we're gonna use it as a crank trigger style distributor. And we are gonna use the uh, crank trigger. We're gonna use the Innovators West crank trigger. And how we're gonna control the timing curve and everything is we're gonna use the controller part of a grid system and a MSD7A box. Now, this does have the, the retro looking decal that MSD has kind of gone back to. Um, however, this is not just a retro decal. This box is actually from the 1980s. When this engine showed up at our shop, it had a packing slip from 1988, the block was still brand new. So we built this engine basically around three components that the owner had. He had a block, he had the timing cover that it takes to fit the Fontana block, and he had a three and a half inch stroke steel crank, which is why we built a 377. So we took this out to four and an eighth inch bore, um, three and a half inch stroke, and so it'll be a little bit modern in the fact that it will be timing and whatnot will be controlled by a computer. And then actually once I get it running, I've got some work to do on the carburetors to get these guys dialed in. Um, this isn't, um, the plan for this engine wasn't to be a real high RPM, real high horsepower engine. This is actually going to go in an old drag car gasser that's been converted to be able to street drive. So. The main purpose of this engine is to be able to drive it around, but yet still look like an old pro stocker. Yet to do, we've still got uh, to put some valve cover breathers in there. I've got the holes marked where we're not directly over top of any rockers that are going to be kicking anything up. Um, we have yet to finish, uh, we've got to finish all the ends to the, the spark plug wires. We still have to make up the water lines to the front. We have a Y fitting that is going to come out basically and use a Y fitting to go back to the front of the uh, radiator or the return side of the radiator. Uh, one of the other things I have left to do is in this day and age, parts are hard to get. So I have to make this uh, tunnel ram linkages for actually for a big block Chevrolet. So I have to take the big block Chevrolet manifold bracket and make it fit a cleaver. We've got this part of it adjusted and done. So we have that part of it working. We still have uh, fuel lines to make. We're going to use uh, the regulator, a uh, four port regulator and run all the fuel lines from that. And once I get those few odds and ends done, um, I think we'll be ready to go ahead and put the headers on it and at least fire it up and try to get it broken in. Okay, well, I'm going to get back to work. I'm going to get to making these parts and pieces, get this engine finished plumbed out, and uh, get this thing fired up here shortly. And we'll be back filming once it's uh, up and running. And we also will be doing uh, some testing of the new control valve for the dyno while we're doing this. So we're kind of going to be have two learning curves all at one time, one with uh, figuring out the engine and one with figuring out the dyno. But anyhow, um, we'll be back shortly. So we've made a little bit of progress on the engine. Uh, as you can see, so far we've got the headers on it. So we've got the headers, I've got to hook up the exhaust yet. Um, we've got our O2 in this side, so we'll be able to measure O2 and we can actually, we can switch that from side to side. Um, I have made the spark plug wires. Um, the spark plug wires, I like to, to order mine without the ends and I don't like universal fit wires because I like the wires to fit nice and tidy. I like them to where when you, when you make them correctly that they can't touch on anything, they can't burn on the pipes, they're not hanging down, they're not in the way. Uh, they're easily numbered so when you take them off, when you're doing maintenance on the engine, you can 
uh, take them off and put them on and they stay in the correct order because that's pretty important. We've had some uh, guys find out that the hard way that uh, spark plug wire order is pretty important. I've also finished up um, the bracket for the tunnel ram linkage. So we converted this from a big block Chevy and made it fit a Cleveland. So now we have throttle. The dyno actually operates the throttle. Uh, the last thing, last two things I have left to do is hook up the water lines and put the holes in the valve covers. Now I like to use my valve covers or get my valve covers without any holes in them so that I can put um, vents or fill bungs or anything like that in them where I want to. Uh, or if uh, an engine is going to use a vacuum pump, we necessarily don't have any anything in the uh, uh, valve covers except for a filler bung, so we don't have any vents. But this engine is going to use uh, a breather in the valve cover because the crankcase does have to breathe. If it doesn't breathe, it'll eventually blow uh, the seals out of the engine and the engine is not going to be real happy because it's going to leak. But on another note, um, for the valve cover, these are a set of valve covers that we're supplying with the engine. And as you can see, this valve cover, it's a nice looking valve cover. The welds are nice. This valve cover does have a one piece, very thick billet rail. And we can see that the bolt holes and everything align. And even with the bolt holes aligned, I have some nice movement with the valve cover. So we know the valve cover, even without a gasket, because we're, we're right on the head, has plenty of clearance. Uh, everything looks really good. That, in contrast to a set of valve covers, that showed up for us to put on this engine, which it's not really a billet rail. They made a rail out of multi pieces. It already had a hole in it. Now the good thing is, is the hole is where I would prefer to put the hole, which is in between the rocker arms so that you don't have any oil spitting up between the rocker arms. The bad part about this valve cover is uh, not just the rail, the worst part about it is it won't even fit on the engine. Now this is an AFD cylinder head. It has the same valve placement as a standard Cleveland, a CHI, Trick Flow, Edelbrock, um, any of those cylinder heads. So this is not some weird cylinder head with weird rocker placements or anything like that. But this valve cover, as you can see, won't even go down. Where I can almost force it down, you can see it's not even straight with the engine. So it, it sits on the engine, whatever it's hitting in the engine, it's cocked. The bolt holes don't even come anywhere near uh, trying to align. And this valve cover is supposed to be for a 351 Cleveland. But that valve cover is not gonna go on any engine that we send out of our shop. So, we will send those back in the crate when we ship out this engine back to its home. Those valve covers will be shipped back in the box, back to uh, someone who maybe can find something to do with this. Maybe they can find something useful for them. But we still have to put our breather holes in. We have two breather holes here and uh, we'll hook up our water lines and we should be ready to start the engine.